coming up on BCAT Magazine. A body is found near a popular Burnaby Park. We find out what happened to an abandoned puppy named Peanut. British Columbians are barking mad over animal cruelty. Hi and welcome to BCIT Magazine. I'm Monica Martinez. And I'm Kareen Grierson. Metro Vancouver's second homicide of the year has RCMP swarming near a quiet Burnaby Park. Allison Riley found out that the identity of the body is still a mystery to police. An unidentified body was found Monday afternoon in Burnaby Lake Park near the corner of Piper and Winston. It was found by a passerby who reported it to Burnaby RCMP. Police are investigating the incident as a homicide. RCMP stay there in the early phases of the investigation and aren't releasing much information, including the gender of the alleged victim. They say identifying the body and giving the sad news to their family is their first priority. Really, we don't have a lot of information. We're still uh, at this point uh, just starting to get into the crime scene there with our forensic unit uh, to gather uh, any of the facts and the evidence that uh, could help us uh, assess and determine what what went on here today or in the last couple of days. Uh, there's no indication how long the individual has been at this location, but it can, I can tell you that it does not appear as though they've been there for a great period of time. Police expect to be investigating the scene well into the night and say they're interested in speaking with anyone who uses the park regularly during the day who may have seen anything suspicious. Allison Riley in Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. Allison Riley joins us now from the scene where the body was found. Allison, have police identified the body yet? Yes, Monica. As you can see, the police tape and the cars are gone, but the investigation continues. Police have identified the body as 27-year-old Carla Marie Smith from Vancouver. Smith is also known by two other names, Justine and Carmine. Smith is known to police for her involvement in the sex trade industry in Vancouver, and police still do not know how she was killed or if she was killed here where her body was found. Is there any connection to the body that was found in North Vancouver last week? Yes, Monica, despite all the women's bodies that have been found in the lower mainland parks in the past few years, police still have not established a link between this body and the rest. Back to you in studio. Thanks, Allison. For the second week in a row, animal lovers were once again faced with a case of animal cruelty, this time in Maple Ridge. Sadly, Allison Riley learned a day-old puppy has passed away. Peanut the abandoned puppy has passed away. The day-old pup made headlines this week when it was found abandoned in Maple Ridge. Little Peanut was found here at this bus stop at Duty Trunk Road and 207th Street. Someone was waiting for the bus when they heard whimpering coming from underneath the seat. Look down to find Little Peanut in a shoebox. Mark Vosper, branch manager at the Maple Ridge SPCA, received Peanut in this fleece blanket and ladies' Puma shoebox. He says there's no excuse for how Peanut was abandoned. But for them to leave that newborn out in the cold and not bring it in to us, there's just no excuse whatsoever for not bringing an animal to the SPCA or to a vet. If you can't do it yourself, get somebody else to do it, but don't abandon it. It is a crime. It's immoral. Unlike these adopted dogs, Peanut won't get the chance to find a safe home. However, there are still plenty of furry friends at the SPCA that need companions. Allison Riley in Maple Ridge for BCIT Magazine. Dog lovers took to Ambleside Park to rally support for stricter laws regarding animal cruelty. Chris Dow was there. Dog lovers and their canine counterparts were barking mad as they attended a rally in West Vancouver. Supporters saw the rally as a way to voice their opinions about the inhumane ways that the sled dogs were killed. Jameson Smith believes those sled dogs could have been saved, rehabilitated, and adopted. And this is Thumper. He was a full sled dog and is now a house pet. There's certainly ways that are more humane than what happened there. In laws that don't permit what happened at the whistler. You know, I have proof living with me. Proof that you can take a sled dog and train it. And, you know, my belief is really that with any dog that you get, you have to commit to the training of that particular dog. Many others saw the rally as a way to petition for stricter animal rights and signatories are hoping that their ink will leave a mark. We're hoping to change law uh, for stiffer penalties uh, so that animals aren't considered livestock. And that's mainly what we're after. And to redefine uh, animal in the law 
and to uh, change the criminal code uh, as it uh, goes for penalties. And even though it might not happen, animals in the Constitution would be nice as well. <laughs> Many rally supporters came to Ambleside Park to help lobby for change. I have never been in a rally ever in my life, never held a placard, but I just think that something has to be done now. It's enough. I would like to find better rules and regulations for businesses that are up there, um, uh, better support systems for sure. I think there should be some very stiff penalties. I'd like to see people more responsible for animals and not use them as a commodity. The petition gathered over 800 signatures that day, and many more are hoping that the rally will pave the way for change. Krista Dow in West Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. Krista Dow joins us now with more on this disturbing story. Krista, there have been a lot of animal abuse cases over the past few weeks. Any indication to why this is? Well, there really is no real answer as to why these animals are being abused. Some have been linking it to the economy. People are unable to pay their bills, and unfortunately, it's the animals that pay the price. But whatever the case may be, people are certainly becoming more aware over these cases, and they're not sitting idly by while these animals get hurt. Is anything being done to the people that are being caught in these cruelty cases? While well, petitions are being signed and rallies are being held, people certainly do care. And in fact, last week, a Victoria man was sentenced to six months in prison for causing unnecessary pain and suffering to his pit bull puppy. The puppy had ten broken ribs, a broken jaw, and even had human bite marks on his body. Now, six months may not seem like a lot, but this is the toughest ever sentence in B.C. regarding animal cruelty cases. The judge even bumped up the sentence from four months to six months. So this, this does show that the culture is changing. Coming up after the break, we find out when BC Place is set to reopen. And beverage containers will be getting a makeover. Stay with us.